Okay, objective 8.5. I'm going to, in this particular video, I'm going to cover 8.5 and 8.6 and 8. Point, uh, no, maybe not 8.7. <laughs> I'll definitely be going through 8.5 and 8.6. So um, the first one we're going to we're going to continue on with talk for like from the symbology talk that we were discussing in the previous video. We're going to talk about exaggeration. Now there's a, there is a lot that goes into exaggeration, but I just want to bring it in as a um, as information so that when you go to look at a map, you understand that even though a lot of things are scaled, it may not be scaled exactly. <laughs> so especially point symbols, point symbols really don't match their scale. So um, in your in your and I'm going to bring you right back to the beginning of the semester when you were do, working through your handbooks with scale, and one of the questions in there was whether to um, whether the the railway made sense, and and so when you look at the railway width and you cal calculated it, you n will notice that the railway was actually exaggerated. So the actual symbol itself, it didn't. It was a line. But first of all, it only showed one, um, one track. There's actually more. There's two, <laughs> um, and or even more than that. I think sometimes there's like six in one area. But the rail, the railway track only showed one symbol. And when you actually measured it, it does not represent a single track because it's like 20 meters. Like it's ridiculously large, or three meters across, and a railway track is not three meters across, and I think it works out to approximately three. So, when you lay down, like let's let's take a look at um, the old West movies, right? They would tie up a girl and put her on the the rail, the the, the railroad, um, waiting for her to be killed or whatever as the train comes by. And so this, this person's tied up on the railway track. There's no way that that is three meters wide. <laughs> so. The exaggeration is there, and so the symbols are made larger than what the actual scale says in order to emphasize that location or some sort of relationship. So you, you do come across this a lot, um, point symbols especially. I mean, if you think about the little cow that I was that I had there, you put that on a map like of one to twenty thousand. Like you're, it is not the size of an actual cow. It is be. It is made larger so that it can emphasize that information. So that's exaggeration. That's where it comes from. Um, and it also helps ensure that the symbol can be seen. Like so, for example, roadways and such, those the, the lines are made thicker sometimes if you can't see them. So they're just made bigger so that you can actually see them. So taking that, we're going to talk about cartographic principles. And so this is um, this is cartography. This is what makes a map look good. It's kind of the art of making maps. So it's something to kind of keep in mind as well. So a cartographic principle, um, there are really five components to it. So the first one is legibility. And this goes with your data and with everything around it. Can you read what is on it? If you can't read what is on it, then it is not legible. And that, that goes for font, that goes for colors, that goes for um, you know foreground and background, that, that goes for like everything. Is the print too small? Is the legend too crowded? Is stuff overlapping that shouldn't be overlapping? If you can't read it, it's not that. Can you distinguish the symbols from each other? Now, sometimes this particular statement where I say, can you distinguish symbols from each other? Um, if you can't, is sometimes symbols are built to be on top of each other. And that's like the purpose of it, because they want to emphasize that things are kind of overlapping anyways. Um, but you can see that it's the same symbol. And I'm not having to identify different sizes. Like, for example, I'd have a really big symbol over top of a really small one, then I wouldn't see the really small one. So you want to, you really want to distinguish those symbols, make sure that even if they do overlap, that there is a way to see the smaller symbols versus the larger ones, and therefore it keeps it legible. The second one is visual contrast. So watch your colors. Now, like purple with green polka dots is not usually a popular idea. <laughs> so um, also you're careful using too many patterns. So I talked about that as well. 
Also watch your contrast. Now, if you have a busy map, like you've got lots going on, you probably don't want high contrast because if you have high contrast, you're going to end up with um, it really hard to see. It's going to be too contrasty. So you'll, you'll want to reduce the contrast for everything and kind of mellow it out if you are doing, if you have a really busy map. The third one is figure ground orientation. So this is, this is where like you're looking at a background versus at a foreground. And sometimes there's like multiple layers to that as well. So you want something that you want the reader to be focused on first to be the darker thing and the one to be kind of the, the most stand out in the orientation. Um, our eyes tend to float to the edge first of something before before it totally hits center. So if you have too much like dark on one side, it's going to feel really strange, right? Like, so if your primary focal point is not the center of the map and it becomes off to the side, it's an uneasy feeling for the reader. So there's a little bit of manipulating with the map and make, to make sure that your your heavier colors, your main feature, main focal point is in the center and then everything else kind of lightens up around it. You can still have the same darkness of the the objects around it as well, but it's just how you place that figure and where you place it on the map. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at it. It's like, can I actually see the features because they're darker and they stand out more um, versus the background? And, um, and are they like placed in a point in, in the location that people's eyes actually go to? So that's important, an important aspect of it. Next is the hierarchical organization. So this is separating your layers so that people can read the relationships easier. Um, again, making sure that you have darker ones at the top and they're not overly large and, and then the, the lighter ones and more paler layers at the bottom. Um, if you have a digital map that has like interaction to it, then you want to be able to have them turn on and off layers so they can read that very easy. So you want to kind of have a, this is what's going to be on top, this is what's going to be on the bottom, and this is the order that it should be in. So there's always an hi a hierarchy on that. Because for example, if you're trying to show um, the like factory carbon output in, in a city and you put all those factories in the different locations and then, but then there's like little rivers behind them and then you put that like on top and then all of a sudden it's like overlapping your symbols. That's probably not what you want to do. You want to be putting the points on the top. Sometimes points go on the bottom and, and that's okay too. It just depends on what you're trying to draw the attention to. So there is a hierarchy. Um, the last one is balance. So balance is just watching how you lay out your map. So, you know, you want the map to be the most important thing. So keep it the biggest thing. <laughs> so I often see people make massive legends and the legend is the same size as the map. The legend is less important than the map. So the map itself needs to be larger and as much, take up as much of that paper as possible and then have the legend off to the side. The other thing too is to keep in mind like what we call visual weight and visual direction. So if you look at a piece of paper and you were to put like a little pin on the center of the paper, where is it going to rock? Because it's heavy on one side. So you want to try to keep that balanced so it's like nice and you've got colors in, in all the areas, you've got the you know data in different areas, you're, and you're keeping things clean and tidy and not crowded on one single side. So the visual weight's really important and visual direction. So we talked a little bit about that before where, you, you know, you, where do your eyes go? Does it go to the right spot? When you hand it to somebody, it's like, what's the first thing you see? Tell me the first thing you see. So that's that visual direction. And does one, like when you look at your map, does looking at one symbol lead to another? Or does looking at that one symbol suddenly pull you away from the map and, and lose interest. So we want to kind of have this harmonious feeling to our maps and maintain what we call an equilibrium. So that's what we, I'm referring to as balance. Um, so cartography is all about that art. 
It's like, how do I get this to be readable, understandable, and have everybody um, like to look at it? The uh, one thing that I want to, I haven't mentioned yet in, in the year, is colors. So when you when you create a roadmap, you do not use red as a background. The reason being that it's going to evoke a feeling of anger in Western society. Uh, you would use yellow. Why? Because yellow is calming and a happy color. It's a calming, happy color. So that's why you're going to see roadmaps are always yellow. Um, sometimes they can be green too. So green's like also a kind of a calming thing too. Um, as soon as you see blue, you suddenly feel cold. So if you make your whole map blue, it's like, it feels like a very cold map. So <laughs> there's all of that that we need to keep in mind in cartography, and that's like symbology integration. But um, so you know, think about all of that stuff while you're working with your map. I mean, I, I'm not going to be um, marking super heavy on, oh, you know, you didn't balance it properly or anything like that. But it's just something to keep in mind as you're working through your, your projects.